Hello and welcome back to another MLB The Show video. Today we're back on the Milwaukee Brewers franchise. In the last episode, things have been going pretty well, but we traded for Billy Hamilton. The trade came up, I finally found one that I liked, pulled the trigger on Billy Hamilton, and now he's on the team. Now, truthfully, Billy Hamilton doesn't really have like a spot, at least not a starting spot on the team. But I figured, you know, this is a one year mode. So if you have a chance to upgrade the team, you may as well do it. So I remember at the end of the last one, I was kind of thinking about how to get Billy Hamilton involved on the team. And I think I figured out uh, the, the uh, ideal way to do that. So when you go into here in the stats and you scroll way far to the right, you can see the uh, splits and here's the averages here. So we got averages versus right on the left and averages versus left on the right. <laughs> but uh, here, the averages versus right, Aguilar is at a 282, Billy Hamilton's at a 280. So he's only, you know, 0.002 behind Aguilar when it comes to righties. But versus lefties, Aguilar is miles ahead of Hamilton. So I think what I'm going to do, obviously, you know, batting average isn't the only metric, the only thing that matters. But what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to have Billy Hamilton play left field against righties. And then Ryan Braun will come into first base. Just because I think if the production between Aguilar and Hamilton at the plate is at least similar and comparable, I mean, you can see RBI is here. Hamilton actually has more against righties than Aguilar. And even the home run differential isn't that big. You know, Aguilar has 10, Hamilton has six against uh, righties. But I think if the offensive production is at least similar enough, which it looks like it should be, um, Hamilton's speed and his fielding is going to be a huge upgrade. And that'd be good to have in the lineup at least against righties when we face them. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and change the lineup to look like that. So I think this might be what I keep the lineup looking like. Uh, this is against righties with no DH. So that's going to be what's happening a lot. I'm not exactly sure. I think the CPU actually changed it around a bit because Arcia definitely hasn't been in the two hole all year, but he's having a good year. 303 average. So they put him in the two hole. And Braun's all the way down the 8-hole, even though he's our best player right now, and he's <laughs> in the MVP race. So I'm thinking uh, I might uh, move Yelich to second, put Braun batting third, and then put Arcia maybe at, like... I don't know if I want to move Arcia all the way down to 8, but maybe put him in the 5-hole. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that later. Uh, see how it works when I actually play another game that that's probably what the lineup's gonna be looking like billy hamilton's gonna be in there against the righties aguilar is still gonna stay in there against the lefties um billy hamilton though i i hope it was a solid trade i hope he provides some nice value uh because he really should honestly with that speed and defense that should be a good value player but now we do have a chance to make sure that billy hamilton provides more value for us because right after we traded for him the next key moment was a player boost, player lock moment with Billy Hamilton. So we have one game here against the Oakland A's to take control of Billy Hamilton. And, uh, well, we see what kind of season Ryan Braun's having with just a, a plus two thing after his player lock. So hopefully I can have a good game here with Billy Hamilton and set him off on the right course for the rest of the season. Well, in case you missed the memo, Billy Hamilton is about to make his debut in his brand new uniform. Yeah, they're hoping his presence is going to give them a little extra boost for the rest of the season. We'll see what kind of impact he has on this team. Yeah, he was just traded for in the hopes of bolstering this lineup heading Reading into the, the back stretch of this season. So we'll see what he can do for this club. So first, first to bet here with Billy Hamilton, the commentators are still talking about him, but... I feel like they said everything that matters so far. If I get a single with Hamilton, you better believe I'm going to be trying to steal. I think he's leading the league in steals with 37. And, uh, you know, obviously that's Billy Hamilton's biggest strength is the stolen base. 
Now, I, I do realize, you know, I do realize that this trade is probably unrealistic. I don't think the Brewers would ever be trying to trade for Billy Hamilton. But because of the way that this mode works, I didn't really have, you know, free reign of who to go after in trades. It just kind of gave me three options every time it popped up. So ideally, I would have gone after a left-handed bullpen arm, but... Billy Hamilton, probably the best option that came up. I don't even think a pitcher came up in uh, the trade opportunities. But a pitcher would have been nice. Hopefully Hamilton does good. He's in a 3-2 count here, so it would be very nice if I could maybe work a walk or get a base hit or something in his first at bat. And, oh, that's, that's better than a walk or a base hit. That's in the gap. That's probably going to be a double, even with his speed. I'm not going to risk going to third. I might steal third, though. Aguilar, he's going to drop that one in there. So the leadoff double doesn't go to waste. Billy Hamilton comes around to score. That's a good first time around the bases for our new acquisition there. Ah, and I couldn't sneak that one down the line. And we can't beat it out. I was hoping that I could go two for two here in the first three innings, but... That's okay. That one, ah, I hit that nice, but it just sliced to the left fielder. I thought we had another gapper off the bat, but it just sliced. Now we're one for three. That's not as good as it started off as. Yeah, we don't get another at bat with Hamilton. We do get the one plus, though, so at least we didn't get nothing. It looks like we ended up winning that game 5-2, to two, so we did get a small momentum boost, too. Actually, that was uh, Chasin on the mound, and he's been by far a worse starting pitcher. So to only give up two runs, maybe that'll right his course, and uh, he can pick it up here in the home stretch of the season. We dropped a few games in that simulation. And... Our key moment is to just pin a loss on the division rival. We're down 4-3 to three in the top of the 8th. I'm thinking... I don't, well, I don't know. I think we're the away team, so I'm assuming we are at bat. So we've got a guy in second, I hope. We do already have a 10-game lead on the Cubs in the division. So, you know, getting another game up is just going to make it that much more of a sure thing that we wrap up this division. And we're in a heated contest between two division rivals, one of whom is happily nested at the top of the standings, and the other one is looking to shake the tree a bit. Matt, listen, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best, right? These are the games where a team who's trying to come out on top of the pack can get a leg up. And, of course, if you're on top, this is a prime opportunity to keep them away. All right, so Billy Hamilton's leading off this key moment here. He's three for three with a double and two singles on the day. I don't know if the, I mean, we have a lefty we're facing now. I don't know if he would have been the starter. Um, I hope not because that would have contradicted what I said as the lineup. And I don't know why I didn't full swing at that. I had good timing. I probably was right on it. So I don't know what was going through my head there. But it'd be nice to get this run home. There's nobody out, so I feel like we can't squander this. At least I better not. And uh, Billy Hamilton can't get that one over the second baseman. I thought maybe he was going to be able to inside out that one, get into the outfield, but he couldn't. Moustakis, whoa, he's having a bad year. I thought he was getting better, but he's down to a 213 average. 290 on base and a three whatever slugging. He is. That's not good. And Mustakis can't. We're gonna. We're gonna leave this runner on two outs now, and he's at third. So we need a hit to drive him in. Oh, uh, it would have been nice to at least have moved him over with Hamilton. But Grandal is up. He's pretty solid for me. So maybe he can come in the clutch here. And tie this game up. And nah, he's not clutch today. Good play by whoever's playing third. I don't think that was Bryant. But they, oh, it was Bryant. Okay, it didn't look like him from home plate. I'm going to bring Jacob Barnes in. He seems to be really solid 
when I pitch with him. Only a 1.8 ERA too, so he's even solid when I don't pitch with him. And on the first pitch, he's getting a pop fly out to center. Kane makes the play, and Billy Hamilton with his speed all the way behind Kane just in case he was missing that. I like that. I like that back up there. No, Carantini's going up the middle with two strikes. This, that is the one thing I don't like about Jacob Barnes is he doesn't have a good two-strike pitch. Everything is fast and doesn't break much, so he doesn't have a very good strikeout pitch. That might be two, though. Make a turn, Arcia. There we go. We get out of the inning. No runs allowed. Still down by one, and this is our last chance, but we've got Ryan Braun up, so maybe he can get something going. They're bringing in their closer, Brandon Morrow. He's had a very good year. 33 saves in 40 games, 1.43 ERA with a minimal batting average. This is this is going to be a tall task. Ah, man. 3-2 count, and I let that one go. He's got so many pitches moving to the right that when he catches the outside of the zone with a fastball, it's... Wasn't expected. I'm expecting it to move out, but we got an out. We still got two to play with, and Eric Thames is definitely going to be who I'm pinch hitting with. Eric Thames. Man, he didn't get enough of that. Oh, we're not even going to put up a fight, are we? Nope. That's a pop-up to Rizzo. He's going to catch it. Wow, that was terrible. I can't think of another time that I haven't even done anything. Like it seems like when I come in with the with a deficit, it, I at least put up a fight. But Jesus, we even had a runner on second with nobody out, and I couldn't I couldn't even get him around the score. That was bad. And we drop two games in a row in the simulation, but we get a chance to win this game against the Pirates to avoid getting swept. We're going to be in the top of the seventh. I think we're the away team, so we're going to start hitting. Our projected wins actually fell to 96, and our lead fell to just seven and a half games, so not a very good stretch there. It would have been really helpful to beat the Cubs in that last moment, but I just I didn't even put up a fight. But I think this next moment might have to wait for another episode. I think it might take too long to have in this episode. So I think I'm going to end it there. Not the uh, not not the best couple of games or not the best simulation. We're still in a commanding lead in the division, though, so that doesn't change. But we can't let it slip away. We are at a 10-game lead, down to 7.5. Projected wins down to 96. But all we got to do is just you know go back to how we've been playing, get some momentum built up, and we'll be fine. Well, that's going to do it for me in this episode. Make sure to hit the like button if you liked the video, and only if you liked the video. Uh, if you want to see the rest of this March to October as it's winding to the close, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that. And that is it for this episode, and I will see you in the next one.